Watch this, this is the same man, the same disease, before and after brain surgery. One moment he can barely walk and the next he's walking totally normal. This is deep brain stimulation and it's transforming lives. But before we dive into how this works, let's back up and talk about what exactly is Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's is one of the most common brain disorders in the world. Millions live with it and every six minutes someone else in the United States is newly diagnosed. So let's break down the science what's actually happening in the brain, why it causes tremors, and the treatments, including DBS, that give hope. First off, Parkinson's disease is a progressive neurodegenerative disorder. It primarily affects movement, but it can also affect mood, sleep, and even thinking. The hallmark symptoms are going to be tremor or shaking that often starts in one hand, rigidity or stiffness, bradykinesia, which means slowness of movement, and postural instability or balance troubles. Now, it can also cause non-motor symptoms like depression, sleep disorders, constipation, and even loss of smell. So you want to think of it as like a short-circuiting of the brain's movement system. Well, what causes it? We know Parkinson starts in a tiny part of the brain called the substantia nigra. Cells here make dopamine, which is the neurotransmitter that allows smooth and coordinated movement. And in Parkinson's, these dopamine producing neurons will gradually die off. Now, without enough dopamine, signals from the brain to our muscles become jerky, delayed, and uncoordinated. Kind of like the man at the beginning of the video. The classic pathological findings is something called Lewy bodies. Those are clumps of protein alpha synuclein inside of the neurons. Say that 10 times fast. The bottom line is that the brain is asking our body to move, but those signal wires are messed up or frayed. Let's talk a little bit of statistics here. Parkinson's affects over 10 million people worldwide. And in the US, 1 million people are living with it right now. And the risk increases with age. So the average age of onset is about 60, but young onset Parkinson's can happen before 50. And it's very real. Men are one and a half times more likely to get Parkinson's than women. And now with people living longer, the cases are expected to double by 2040. So how do we treat it? Well, Parkinson's is not curable yet, but treatments can dramatically improve the quality of life by controlling the symptoms. So let's break down all the treatment options. First is gonna be medications, which is to be honest, the first line treatment for most people. The gold standard for the treatment of Parkinson's is a medication called levodopa. It converts into dopamine in the brain and restores movement. Doctor, I thought dopamine is the neurotransmitter that makes you happy. See, there's different parts in our brain that dopamine works in. In the limbic system and the prefrontal cortex, it does govern pleasure, but it also controls movement in the nigrostriatal pathway. It helps coordinate smooth and controlled movement. Now, levodopa is often given with something called carbidopa, and that's given because it helps prevent breakdown in the gut and reduce side effects. But long-term use can lead to these motor fluctuations that I mentioned in yesterday's case of these on and off periods and something called dyskinesia. Disc what? It looks kind of like this where there's writhings of the arms, legs, and the trunk. There's other medications that we can also try such as dopamine agonists and they're often used in younger patients in order to delay the use of levodopa. MAOB inhibitors like selegiline these actually block the breakdown of dopamine and prolong its effects in the body. And those are good in early Parkinson's or as an add-on therapy. COMT inhibitors extend levodopa's action by blocking dopamine breakdown and then sometimes used for dyskinesia is a medicine called amantadine. Now, despite what you may think, Parkinson's isn't just about tremor. It has all these other non-motor side effects like depression, anxiety, sleep problems. So we have to treat those too. It can lead to constipation and cognitive decline. Extremely important in the treatment of Parkinson's is rehabilitation therapy, like physical therapy, speech therapy, and occupational therapy. 
What's really important is that you understand it is a multidisciplinary approach. That means so many different healthcare professionals are involved in the treatment of this disease. What about the patient I talked about yesterday? He has advanced Parkinson's disease and he responds to levodopa, but he still has these severe on and off fluctuations and dyskinesia. Many of you guys guessed it, but the answer was deep brain stimulation. This is a really cool application of neuromodulation and how we can use surgical techniques to change how our brain works. Honestly, neuromodulation is one of the coolest things that we do in our field. Well, how do you stimulate deep in the brain? You actually take electrodes and then you implant them into the to certain regions in the brain, like the subthalamic nucleus or the globus pallidus interna. Now these wires are then tunneled out of the brain and then they're connected to a battery right here, very similar to how a pacemaker works. That battery then sends controlled electrical pulses and it normalizes the abnormal firing patterns in the brain. Pretty cool, right? That reduces tremor, rigidity, and dyskinesias. It can lower the amount of medications that a person needs and can most importantly, improve their quality of life not a cure, but it is best for motor symptoms and it's less effective for balance, speech, and dementia. So what's on the horizon for the treatment of Parkinson's disease? Gene therapy, stem cell therapy, disease modifying drugs, which are aimed to slow or even stop the progression of the disease, and even focused ultrasound treatments. Now just to summarize, the treatment of Parkinson's is mostly symptom management. It starts with medications to adjust as the disease progresses. We use rehab therapies throughout the disease process and then consider surgical treatments like DBS in advanced cases. And most importantly, supportive care for non-motor symptoms is crucial. Research into gene therapy, stem cell replacement, and even neuroprotective drugs is ongoing. And the goal is not just to treat the symptoms, but to slow or reverse the disease. So whether you're a healthcare professional, a patient, or someone who just cares, make sure you share this video because the more we spread awareness, the faster we can push for research, funding, and breakthroughs. Together we can bring hope and maybe one day a cure. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.